Um, Steve Rimmer, check my extra energy. So the Anaconda Wave Energy Converter, the title is a challenge for the last amount of materials. And I've used the phrase last amount of materials because rubber is becoming fashionable. Um, I'm the pro project manager for the project, and <coughs> the first question is, well, what exactly is this device that we're talking about? Uh, how big is it? Uh, what kind of wave climate is it going to see? Uh, what are the demands on the rubber? And uh, there's a little graphic here which should fire up fairly quickly that shows what it is. There we go. Right, now we've eliminated the voiceover from this because there's a, a, a guy who will talk over this in our, uh, on our website. Um, <coughs> as you can see, it's a rubber tube. It's a distensible rubber tube. Uh, that's a technical word which just describes the properties of the tube in a particular way. Um, it's designed in such a way that that bulge which you can see passing along the tube will travel at the same speed as the waves that are passing, uh, passing into it from the sea. Uh, as the bulge travels down the tube, uh, it gathers energy from the waves and increases in size until its, uh, its energy is removed by the power takeoff device at the back. Uh, this little rather eerie <coughs> image uh, portrays a wave farm uh, with a number of these devices in, in, in place and uh, the, the, the fade there really shows you that they're, they're pretty unobtrusive uh, in the environment and um, they'll actually operate just slightly above the surface of the water so they're not quite as unobtrusive as we try to make out there. Oh, right. um, so what have we been doing with this thing? Well um, in conjunction with some colleagues at Southampton University and uh, the developer guy who owns Checkmate. Um, we've been doing a number of trials. In Southampton they carried out, a group of students about three years ago carried out a 180th scale trial uh, in their wake loop. Um, we carried out a trial in the uh, towing tank at um, in Southampton University uh, with a 125th scale. Uh, since then we've had on three occasions been down to Hadlar Road which used to be called, um, the facility there was the Admiralty number two towing tank, uh, a rather prestigious and famous place because all the, all the uh, Royal Navy ships have been tested in that, in that facility and again 125th scale uh, and then more recently we've been up to Glasgow to the Strathclyde University where uh, rather than just proof of concept we've got a, a we've carried out an exhaustive um, set of tests where we have a power matrix so we, see, we can see exactly how much hydraulic power has been generated by our device in different wave conditions. Um, this is an image of um, the power takeoff. You can see uh, a GRP device there, which is a container where the pressure pulses arrive. Uh, they arrive from the, the left hand side of the image, because you can imagine the tube stretches out in that direction. The pressure pulses arrive in the plenum and pass through a series of valves into, um, in this particular case, a, a pair of rubber accumulators which are lying out onto the right hand side of the image. Uh, the flow takes place across that pipe work at the top there through um, a flow measuring device and we can measure the pressure difference between the two sides of the device and the, the, high, the, the water flow and therefore calculate the, um, the hydraulic power that we have. There's another image of the same thing, you can imagine how the tube is passing down behind you and uh, we're just in the process of uh, putting the last bits of pipe wind together there before we deploy it into the water. So samples of tube there, but I haven't got them with me, so we'll have to make deal with the image. So this is uh, some film that was taken uh, last year, or uh, May 2009, uh, showing the device in the water. And uh, in comparison to that computer graphic where you see these eggs flowing down the tube, you'll see something a bit more realistic here. That's the uh, Admiralty number two towing tank. And there's some waves coming in. You can see, just see the device there bobbing uh, just slightly above the water, an area that's under the water. Those uh, tabs at the bottom there are about one metre apart. You can see at the side, there's a sort of a grey stripe there. That's um, a rubber panel, um, which is present in the, in the tube. Um, you can see, well, rather, rather, well, maybe not surprisingly, it surprised me, because I'm not a hydrodynamicist. When, uh, when we saw the underwater film, you see the thing heaving quite a lot, so it has a quite a strong vertical motion. Uh, if you, if you look very, very carefully, you might even see that, uh, that panel at the side there stretching. Again, no eggs travelling down it like the, the graphic did. Uh, the thing there you can see sticking in the water is a wave gauge, so we can, uh, we can measure the size of the waves. And then 
there, and right at the back is the power takeoff that you saw earlier laid out on the floor while we were assembling it. We made one or two changes to this design since the last time. We're due to go back to Glasgow University again in a fortnight's time, and we'll have some uh, uh, a rather different uh, arrangements. Um, so the original proposal, I'm uh, sort of minding my own business, trying to earn a living, and um, a colleague in the, the room <coughs> today, uh, Martin Bennett, introduced me to Francis Farley, who said, um, well, I'd like you to consider how we might manufacture a rubber tube that's 150 metres long and 7 metres in diameter. So that's interesting. Uh, and by the way, the wall thickness will be 300 millimetres. And um, so I thought, well, I'll work out how much material is involved in that, because that's what you always do if you want to make a, a product for a customer. You want to know how much material is in it. And it worked out after several repeated attempts to <coughs> make sure I got the decimal points in the right place. It's 2,000 tonnes. Um, so, and that's an all rubber tube, no real manufacturing process for that. Uh, design's changed a little bit, it's actually down longer, uh, six metres in diameter, about the same. Uses maybe 200 tonnes of rubber, so it's still a very large and considerable uh, user of, uh, of natural rubber. Uh, it's a composite structure, uh, and by